So now we're joined by Courtney Gregoire, who's running for uh, Court Commission. So go ahead with a two-minute introduction. Uh, my name is Courtney Gregoire. Uh, it's good to see many of you again. Uh, as uh, you may know, I was uh, appointed to the Court Commission on March 15th, and I'm now running to retain that seat. Uh, I have really kind of three priorities I want to focus on. The first is making sure that the Port of Seattle lives up to the economic development agency it can and should be. The port supports some 200,000 jobs and generates $6.8 billion in economic contribution to this state. But we can and must do better. Trade, tourism, the fishing industry, all of the maritime depend on a strong port, and I want to continue to work on that. Second, uh, I really believe it's important that we walk the talk in terms of our commitment to environmental sustainability. This means focusing on the cleanup of the Duwamish, but it also means focusing on reducing our carbon emissions. Uh, the port, by its very nature, by its industry, of course has an economic footprint, but we can do and should do everything we can to ensure we are living up to the environment steward we want to be and the green gateway we talk about ourselves. This is important um, not just because it's the values of our region, but at the end of the day, it is a clear competitive advantage that we offer our customers who want to do business here and is critical to the tourism that we hold so dear. And the third is really ensuring accountability and strong leadership at the Port of Seattle. Too often, the Port of Seattle is thought of as an afterthought. If you have a challenge that you're thinking about, you serve the city, the county, or the state. The Port should, it has a vested interest, and must be active in every transportation project, in ensuring workforce development. And as I like to say, if an agricultural, if a farmer from Eastern Washington has a container shortage, I want them to know to pick up the phone and call me. If Bigger Industries is fighting to create more jobs here by creating the next Coast Guard offshore patrol cutter, I want them to know that the Port of Seattle will be their advocate. And ensuring that political strength is a priority for me. Thank you. Great, thank you. So now we have five prepared questions that we're asking all uh, candidates for court commissioner and two minute answers to these. So, uh, Evan, will you start us with number one? Sorry. What is your plan to keep the Port of Seattle competitive when other ports offer similar services at lower costs? Very good question. Um, the port's competitiveness um, is very critical, uh, and we mean it by the bringing customers here and the jobs that they create. I think we need to be thinking about a comprehensive freight mobility strategy um, to ensure that goods uh, are moved through the port uh, efficiently and effectively. Uh, we also need to be thinking about the entire ecosystem. Our customers think about not just you know, the time it takes for this ship to be un unloaded, but is there warehousing near that? Um, it, what is the in industrial manufacturing base? And thinking about that in ecosystem and how we support that and the working waterfront jobs that supports is critical. We're also a, a dual port, and so we cannot forget um, the airport and the investments we must make there. We want to position the SeaTac Airport to be the international gateway for the entire region. That means expanding international flights and doing it in, in a way that is working with the partners in the SeaTac region. There are a lot of federal issues that impact our competitiveness. Um, I, uh, during my traffic jam on the way over here, uh, spent some time talking to some administration officials about how we're going to address the harbor maintenance tax. Um, it is one of those issues that a customer thinks about when they think, do I go to SeaTac Seattle as a port call or do I go to Prince Rupert? But it's a critical one for to us to think about from our competitiveness. Lastly, and it's, it's by no means limited, we have to think of a way the Port of Seattle and the Port of Tacoma together. This is about the Puget Sound's economic generation and the impact we have on this state. At the end of the day, losing a customer to the Port of Tacoma is a loss for the state of Washington. And so I want to work on that. I want to spend some time. I'm very happy about the fifth commissioner we just appointed, uh, Stephanie Bowman, who I think will be a welcome addition to help work on those issues. But at the end of the day, I think it's going to be requiring us bringing in a third party uh, leadership at the state level to get that done. Sorry, number two. What specific plans do you have to make the port more sustainable and limit its environmental footprint? Very good question. Um, I'm very proud of uh, the Port of Seattle's engagement with the Northwest Clean Air Clean Air Strategy and working with the Port of Tacoma. But there are some specific issues that I think we can continue to work on. The shore power we've provided uh, for cruise ships is one of the first in the nation and is a model. We need to think about how we take that model and apply it to all the business that, that the port is engaged in. Um, everyone here knows uh, we have some constraints at the Port of Seattle in terms of our ability to move containers in, in a normal nature. And that means that those short haul trucks 
um, are, are, are really our lifeblood to ensure freight mobility. And they can have a huge impact on our environment. Um, we have uh, a program uh, that was implemented in the past and needs to be implemented in the future to really bring those, those trucks up to code, but we need to do it in partnership with those truck drivers. Um, those folks uh, are really living paycheck to paycheck. We cannot just simply pass along uh, the, our, our obligation to be environmentally sound. We need to think about the partnerships to move forward there. Um, and uh, I, I cannot um, understate our responsibility to help clean up the Duwamish. And that is, there are many, many parties that are responsible for that activity. The Port of Seattle is one that came to the table early and, and has been working to find a draft strategy forward. We've now got a draft plan from the EPA, and it's going to require some leadership on our part to bring all the stakeholders who've uh, impacted that community to work together and bring it um, up to, a, to a, a level that really is important for the health and safety of the community. Um, I think. Uh, do you support the salary increase for port commissioners, and do you support other changes or reforms of the port commission? Thank you. Uh, I do not. Uh, I do think we need to think about a better structure for the port of Seattle commission. I am just getting my feet under me there and want to think um, long term about what the best structure is for that port. Uh, there's no question. Uh, I am a full-time employee. Uh, and the mother of a young daughter, uh, and is very, uh, very committed to my family first and foremost. But I wanted to take this on because I think leadership at the port that is committed to making sure that place represents our community's values um, is very critical. But it was a hard decision because it means taking on a part-time job in addition to all of my responsibilities, and it isn't compensated that way. I've got a great support network uh, that I can do. Um, how do we make sure that those five representatives are all representative of the community and it's not just a conflict of interest or uh, um, some family wealth or a retirement plan that allows them to sit there? That requires thinking about a structure. I do not support the level of salary increase that the commission passed before I joined. I think we could have had a conversation that would have structured that in a better way. Uh, I understand why they wanted to peg it to the state legislature's salary because it meant there was a logical place to peg it. But um, this is a part-time role, it is not a full-time job, and there needs to be a way to restructure it. Whether that's thinking about how the commission is staffed, the commission's role uh, broader, um, there are other issues that I think. Clayton, number four. <clears throat> what role should the court commission play in maintaining and increasing family wage jobs and green jobs? You know, as I said in my opening statement, uh, at our very heart, the port is an economic development agency. An economic development agency should be judged on its ability to support family wage jobs. We know the longshoremen jobs uh, down at the port that we think of probably first and foremost are good family wage jobs, but the port has an impact much broader than that. Um, we talked briefly about the short haul truckers. Um, those uh, individuals are treated as independent contractors and really do, I've met with them, live paycheck to paycheck. Um, there are many challenges here, however, as to the reach in the jurisdiction of the Port of Seattle. We don't set the wages and benefits for those, those truck drivers. We don't set the wages and benefits for those concession workers at the airport. But we sure can and need to use our convening power to have real conversations. At the end of the day, ensuring that those folks that are working at the port have family wage jobs is really about our broader economic impact. Uh, meeting with the workers at the airport, what struck me is that those individuals are turning to the state for health care benefits, sometimes food stamps. In other words, they are uh, requiring more assistance because of the jobs that they hold. That, I think anyone, any rational person can have a conversation with, does not make sense. Um, and so we need to be thinking about both how we support family wage jobs and opportunities for advancement in that space. I, I think. Um, one thing I think about is really important is the indirect jobs the port supports. And that's the maritime industry, the commercial fishing industry. These are tenants per se, but they sure as heck um, are here because of the value of the port. And as we, as a port, think about what the Green Gateway means, we can talk to them about what green jobs means. And, um, and I think uh, thinking about that going for the future is really important. Thank you. Elizabeth, number five. Do you believe we have achieved full transparency in the board's contracting and compensation practices and 
where do you see possibilities for further improvement? It's a very, uh, very good question. I think the port today conducts its business, in, 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 by any objective value, very transparent, transparently. The problem is, the public needs to know what is relevant to them, and we need to be communicating that in a proactive basis. Uh, one concrete example I will give you is um, how the tax levy is used. Now, you today could go to the port's website and look at our um, broad financial plan. You'll find one page of it that talks about how the tax levy is utilized. In terms that you and I may understand, but I do not think the average person understands what it means to say freight mobility strategy project paid for with your tax dollars. Uh, I think transparency requires being a, a lot more concrete about the project that your taxpayer dollars is, is actually making come real. Um, and that's about better communication. It's not about more transparent communication. I am happy to have you know, uh, our monthly expenses scanned and put up into a huge database. But at the end of the day, does that tell the public how their resources are, if we're being good stewards of the resources? I don't believe so. And so um, I, of course, have a commitment to continue um, ensuring that meetings are open and transparent, that we conduct our business in a transparent way, but we gotta think how we actually communicate what matters um, in a much more proactive way. That gets to my priority about the port's the port really being the role it should play in the community. Only if the taxpayers understand the role we play is that point of work. Uh, I am happy to be serving on the audit committee because I do think there's still um, a, a critical role for the commission to be doing oversight in our contracting and understanding uh, where conflicts may exist, where additional resources should be saved, uh, and I will continue from that work. Thank you. So now I'll open it up to follow-up questions from the executive board. These are one-minute answers. Anybody has a question? I know I have one. Uh, you mentioned um, uh, working with the Port of Tacoma. I wonder what you think of the uh, idea that's thrown around about merging the two. So I, I like to say we need to walk before we can run. And there has been 20 plus years of uh, a call for better cooperation between the Port of Seattle and the Port of Tacoma. And every Every time that conversation has happened, the term merger comes up and one party or the other party pushes away from the table, saying, that's not in my best interest. Uh, I, I think we need to come to an agreement about what our strengths and weaknesses are as two different ports and start with joint marketing to bring customers to the region. Um, and, and, and other cooperation, particularly in freight mobility and infrastructure investments. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, as I said, I do think um, because there are some vested interests on both sides, we need to have a third party that's going to come to the table, but I want, bring us to the table, but I really want to start those conversations <coughs> together um, to find our strengths and weaknesses and where we can go forward. Thank you. Uh, sir. Um, there was a proposal to have coal trains come to the 36th district. I'm just interested in what your position is on that, particularly kind of taking into account health and safety impacts. Uh, you know, I think the Port of Seattle has a, a vital role um, to understand um, the freight mobility impacts of the proposed coal train. We have uh, asked some questions, but I, I need some much better answers to understand the track usage, the time of the tracks, how that's going to impact all the work that's going on down there. And why? Because I believe the Port needs to be asking about the questions that are critical and core to its mission. Uh, I, uh, at the end of the day, uh, being very, very, very candid, don't believe the port's in a role to prescribe what kinds of quantities move to or through the port, um, but we sure are in a role to understand what is the impact on our ability to do business and support the jobs that we need to support in an environmentally sustainable way. Um, what is the law on, on the ability of the port to determine what passes through it? But it ships. Um, so that is a, that is a, I do not know the immediate answer to that. I <coughs> take the approach um, that we are an entity that needs to be neutral on what commodities come through the port. Um, I believe that is kind of a guiding principle I think of as good stewardship of a public asset. Um, but uh, I, and I believe that resides um, really in a principle, and I don't know where that resides in law. 
Barbara de Chaco. I want to ask a, a follow-up question about the salaries issue. You made a comparison to legislative salaries appropriately because that's where it's been pegged, but referenced the idea that the port commission is a part-time job, say maybe as opposed to a legislator's job, but of course a legislator's job is also part-time. I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you see those roles as being different and why a legislator's salary may be justified at the level it is, whereas the leg a legislator's salary may not be justified for a port commission. It's a very, um, I, I fully admit, um, the, the salary increase uh, was voted on before I came in, and so I have not dug into deep comparative analysis. And you're absolutely right, they're both part-time, but they're part-time in different ways. Um, the Port Commission meets three times a month, uh, uh, and, um, but the truth of the matter is, its business is conducted almost every day. Um, but it is not the demand of going down to Olympia for an entire legislative session and working seven days a week. That said, the port makes decisions that have a really broad impact. Um, uh, I've had some individuals tell me the difference here is the state legislator can vote on any issue. You're a special purpose jurisdiction. You have very clear boundaries. Um, I, I actually think the economic impact uh, 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 in, in some ways could be considered equivalent, but it does mean I don't work, I don't work on all of the issues the state legislator would, would focus on. Um, I, I'm the first to tell you, I, I, would have uh, dug in here pretty closely and understood which way to pick it, and I'm not here to tell you a different salary. I think they're unique goals. Uh, I don't think they are different. Uh, and expand our economic footprint. 
Uh, we need to be doing it in a way that always is mindful of, of our in impact on the environment, um, particularly uh, the Duwamish, also our carbon emissions. Uh, but lastly, I really have a focus on elevating the Port of Seattle. I hope you would call on me when you have a problem and you want something forward in the region. I want to be that kind of commissioner. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.